70 amateur soccer players headed to Indianapolis in the spring for a chance at the dream of playing professional soccer. 46 players advanced to a three-month summer camp. 22 players earned the selection to a two-day mini camp. Someone will join Indy 11 in preseason for the opportunity to earn a pro contract. None of these players are on the radar of pro soccer. For many, it's their last chance to reach their dream. For some, it's their only chance. You get one chance, you gotta make it count. You, you can't rely on the next time because you know maybe it'll it'll be your last. And that's kind of the motto I live by is you, just, you gotta give it your all at every moment. Now that I'm, I'm here, I have to, to make a statement. You know? I'll be everybody's pipe dream. That's fine. Look at my play on the field. It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be given, it's not gonna be handed. And you got guys that on your own team are gonna try and take your position because they that's how they make their living. That's the pros. Get, get ready for it. If you're not ready for it, then, then you don't need to be on this field. Whether you're a soccer fan or not, you can get invested in this story because this is somebody grasping at their dream and for some of them a last chance to try to play professional soccer at some level. And it's really unique and cool to make this dream a potential reality for some of these players. Usman Kamara is from Sierra Leone, Africa, and moved to Indianapolis to pursue a better life in 2017. His mother shaped his values to have a generous heart and to help others. Since he left Africa in 2017, he has not seen his mother. He immigrated to the U.S. with his dad. Usman attends Anderson University in Indiana. I've been here for six, six years now. I haven't seen my mom yet since I've been here, so it's really difficult. My mom was a single mom. I felt like my dad and my mom divorced. So my mom didn't have nothing. It was really hard. And there's no job over there for like the people to to actually do. So everybody just plays soccer and hope that the skill take them to a different country where there's opportunities. That's so why like, when I was in Africa, I, I, I play more soccer than I go to school. <laughs> but I went to school, but when we go to school, we play soccer, we play street ball. Would I have like none of the soccer materials like other people here? Like we play in the gravel, we play in the stones. So like we'll have no grass, our feet is not nice. We play street ball, we play in the, like in the street. So it's like it's coming to the United States and see all these opportunities like other people have. It's like when when somebody's not grateful for it, I feel I feel like I feel like they have to go to Africa and see how it is so they can be grateful of what they have here. My dream was um, to be a soccer player and get education. Now I live with my dad. Like, he work all the time so he can take out me and my brothers. He, he barely comes to my games. Like this is why I want to make it so that I can make him stop, like stop working a lot. Just like focus on us and have that dad relationship. Me and my mom are very close and um, so like living here and without her, it's like, it's like, um, it's like really sad for me. Back in Africa, I used to go to a trash can, like pick up trash radios and fix it and make it work and listen to a radio station and play music in my room. Then I fix like lights in my room in Africa, go to a trash can, take it up, fix the lights and put it in my room and make it like a light bulb and make it put it in the living room because we don't have electricity in Africa. I was like, I might take a shot to be an engineer. And when I finish college, I, I have a plan to go back home and pay for people to go to college. Because like most of my friends that I grew up in Africa, they have skills that like it require college and get good job. I went to Anderson, then I saw they have engineering and the coach is really like good. And I feel like he would be like my guidance through school. So the coach is really good coach. And the way he talked to me, I feel like as, as his, his own kid, you know? So I was like, yeah, this might be a good opportunity. And I took it, I didn't regret it. So when he walked in the first time in that parking lot, that's the first thing he said, he's like, I just want to play pro professional. I just want to play professional. You know, I, I, that'll be good for my family. I want to take care of my mom. You know, just last week he was asking me about going back and helping his mom build her she, a small office for her business. If I'm seeing somebody struggle, I want to help them. Because in Africa, there's a lot of people that are struggling and it's hard for them to get help. 
even back home, I help my other friends that couldn't go to school. I help them, I send them, send them money so that they can go to school. He's, he just has a giving heart. He is, uh, he's selfless and he's, he definitely understands what it means to help your family and be a part of a family. 100%. Well done, boys, well done. Coach is a really, really, really great guy. Like when he was talking to me, like I can tell that everything he was saying is, is true and he's going to do it because the main thing is he was telling me like, hey, focus on school. Why are you doing soccer? And see where are you going to end? And just pray to God to achieve your goals. He's willing to work hard. He's got all the physical attributes. He's got the speed. Now it's can he put all the tactical pieces the way people want him to play and make it work for him and for the team. I think that's what his freshman year, the toughest start part from him is he had come from a program where they just said, kick it 90 yards, you go get it and score. Well, we don't play that way, right? We want to keep control. We want to play under possession. We want to, we want to get after it with numbers. And he can very well be, he can be very successful in that. Can he make it? I think he can in the right situation. The way I play, everybody like trying to like play me rough because um, I play forward and fast and strong. So people um, want to hurt me and talking smack to me so I can get out of my games. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes just ignore them. And sometimes I just focus on the game. And my coach always tell me that they're doing this just for you not to play good. So if you, if you, if that game in your head, then you're going to lose your game, so don't listen to them. So I just keep calm and play what I want. But sometimes it's hard for me, like, to really, like, not talk to them back. Hey, Uzi! 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 I'm really excited about this program you guys have. I think I think this is fantastic for college kids that want to that want to go to that next level and be a part. Just to be around the the professional team and be part of the family it make me really happy. And this is why I want to I want to do soccer. I want to go to the team. Soccer is something I want to do right now, and it's something that I always want to do. And I want to achieve my goals as a soccer player, go professional. Represent 11, hopefully, one day. <laughs> Three players from the undrafted program live with Usman in his house. Life gets interesting when four 20 year old guys live together. We met at the, the first game. Well, I, already, I already knew him from like the, um, the tryout. And I talked to him, he's like, Yeah, I'm from Sierra Leone too. I said, like, Wow. Initially, we were going to stay for two days only and then go back to. Us three find another like state, but then we end up staying here longer. <laughs> I just um, feel bad that like they came from another another place, another um, city, another state, and they came from another country, and they don't have a job, so it's hard. Yes. So I just like, hey, you can just stay here. So is anyone messy? I mean, it looks clean today, but I imagine you guys pitched in and cleaned up today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If anybody but messy, you can you can say some fake news and fake lies. <laughs> yeah. but it's not I'm fake gonna news. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna say anything because who, who cleans the dishes every time? You are supposed to clean the dishes. You cook the most. You guys, I'm not gonna say they, cook. they leave a mountain of of plate. I clean them always. I, I bought I bought cereal for them, frosted flakes, and they'd be laughing at the, this highlight. They'd be laughing yeah, at me because flakes. I came at night. They finished my frosted flakes. <laughs> <laughs> These guys during the day they like to stay in the dark. I come and open the the light, and they'd be mad, and and they say, "Yeah, close the light." And it's the day. <laughs> That's very important because the guys cook with this. <laughs> so you put this, this. This is a rice cooker. This they go. These guys are good cookers. Even even Milan. I don't know. Me, I only know you know some eggs, some, some, <laughs> some <laughs> eggs, <laughs> some <laughs> eggs, some noodles. That's it. <laughs> like he make he makes he makes mean cereal. Like no, it's not my special. I I make some salmon too. I put some salmon. But that salmon no, 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 was wrong. Like, <laughs> that did, salmon was he wrong. He didn't kick the salmon out. Like, it was pink inside. Yeah, I like No though. seasoning. Right now, we don't have no water in front. Nobody wanna buy water. <laughs> 
we don't have no food. So I don't know how we're gonna do this, but uh, we'll everybody, figure it out. everybody right now say they're broke. These players represent a variety of nationalities and come to Indianapolis from 18 states. Some drive three to four hours. Some have made the move to Indianapolis and one flies in and out for each match. Moving from another city, flying in and simply committing to 10 weekends over the summer is an impressive level of commitment. The N11 undrafted program has a ranking system that they're using. Very interesting dynamic here. Coaches can rank each player after every single game. There's 10 games total. Their decisions matter a little bit more. So their numbers are gonna be weighted, but also fans can vote. The rest of the staff can vote for who they think is doing well in this undrafted program. And so far we've got a lot of really awesome players in the top 10. We've got Kendall Hamilton, a forward that scored a couple of goals last time around, who's caught everybody's eye. We've got Ramon, who we talked to earlier, also in the top 10. We've got Sal, who took the first place. And in addition to the ranking system, there's also a tier system that goes right along with that. So the tier that everybody is fighting for is tier number one. That's your best of the best players, the players who scored the most in the voting. They will be paired with tier four players. So the players who had the worst scores so far out of week one. Now, tier one players and tier four players, they will band together and be on one team. Then you have your middle of the road players like tier two, tier three, they will be on their team. Now these are not locked in stone. There is a way for guys to continually move up and down. So just because you're tier one this week does not mean that you're safe. You could be in tier one one week and tier four the next. frustrating you today about you know how the team can't score first or kind of explain that I feel like it's our long touches like when we play the ball through it's a little too much it's too hard so I feel like if we better that in the second half thing will get back and score on what's your biggest strength as a soccer player? I feel like my speed and just like my football IQ to play with like other players because I usually play well with other players and some people don't but like I do and that's what makes me different Kendall, you're doing well out there, too. You're on, like, every touch. Like, how much of it is your mission to get the ball on your feet right now? Um, I mean, you know, second game, I'm trying to still show them what I can do. So, obviously, like, <laughs> getting on the ball as much as I can is going to help with that. But, you know, I'm not trying to do too much when I get on the ball. I'm still trying to make the right soccer play. Is there anything that's frustrating you guys right now that you wish you could do better? I mean, obviously, we want the ball as much as possible, right? So when we lose it, we're like, oh, okay, we, we lost it. But then, like, our team's doing a great job of trying to work and get it back and, like, trying to get it back up to us so we can do our job. Anything frustrating, Kendall? Um, it's just hot. <laughs> you know? It's hot. It hasn't been this hot in a long time. So other than that, I think we're doing pretty good. All right, where does Team Navy compare to Team Light Blue over there right now? Oh, we're cooking them. We're going to get two more. We're picking the ball around. We're moving it. We're playing as a team right now. They're trying to do a lot of stuff by themselves, and we're playing as a whole team, which is what you want to do in soccer, right? Game too, so people are kind of getting more comfortable. Yeah. As as minutes go on, everyone's getting more into like, their game, yeah. maybe knocking some rust off if they've played in a while. Yeah. I feel like first game, everybody was like afraid to like make mistakes, yeah. and like you shouldn't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah, mistakes take some risk. Yeah, yeah, take more risks. The coaches carve out moments to provide feedback and advice. Some of the guys are maybe uh, they they don't want the ball as much as they need to, so the, the possession isn't as as quality as it needs to be. But I also think that it's hot, so players aren't willing to make the extra run. Uh, and a lot of these runs are on selfish runs to create space, and they're not doing it at the moment. So, The coaches need to see the players in a variety of scenarios. They're not there to specifically coach the players, which is why you'll see them often stand back and observe. You can tell the personalities coming out from the first week to the second week. We don't have technically coaches for these teams for a reason because we want to see the leadership come out and the personalities come out of the play with the players. Every 50-50, we win it. Yeah. Nothing left. Come on, boys, fight! Hey, hey, put that it's a hot day. Cool it on the long balls, bro. Let's just play through the middle. Yeah, if we play the 4 4 2, then the balls go up to the strikers. We have to help us because yeah, otherwise yeah, we're going to yeah, be yeah. put on an island. Right. We want to see the attacking players look to break the line, break the line, break the line. If you don't get it, you know that we're just going to use the ball and build up, build the field a little bit. 
when that moment was to, to go in your area, it's not just one guy, it's one, two, three, four, very, very tight. Yep. Okay, win the ball up on the counter press and then go to goal. We play soccer because we love it to have fun. So we can't come out here, we can't come out here and stress it too much to where we don't end up fun. hating it, you know, and not having fun. So as much as I am pissed, if we could have a better outcome, I mean, exactly, we might have fun out there. What really surprised me was the leadership skills that emerged from all of these soccer players. They didn't really have a specific coach, which meant that they needed to step up for each other. Indy 11 did this on purpose because they wanted to see who was going to step up. So by the time game two and three rolled around, you found your player coaches who were able to rally behind a team. What I found is that a lot of the coaches that were players were defenders. Defenders needed a way to stand out. They're not the flashy ones out there scoring goals. They needed a way for the Indy 11 staff to notice them, and that's what they did as player coaches on the bench. You see what's in front of us, and we're still taking eight touches, not playing the guy, just trust the first pass you see. Play it, knock it around. We gotta move the defense. As the players have gotten to know each other, they're much more efficient at putting together strategies and discussing tactics. This is not a training camp. This is not fluffy and feel-good pickup soccer. This is professional sports, and the coaches are watching everything. How does a player receive criticism? How do they handle adversity? How do they interact with their teammates? How positive or negative are their personalities? It's important to know these elements before you bring someone into the locker room. You need to direct them to a little bit more. Like, you as an attacking uh, center mid, like, you're doing a lot of movement. You were down by me at one point in time, and that should... Not almost never happened, but they were up. It's like you guys are doing inverted triangle. You're the attack, and we had two out, defense. Out, out. We need to make sure that we're doing rotation. I always want that triangle in the middle. I'd rather have two midfielders sitting above our four okay. than one. Stay with your yeah. guy and stick with them. They're, they, they're like, how many times did the center mids get the ball, have time to stick a touch, yeah. turn, and yeah. drive at us? Yeah. We can't, they, they can't have that space. We have three center mids. Drop, drop. Gotta score, gotta score. Let's go! How satisfied are you with your performance today? Not, not satisfied. I'm never satisfied. And also, I didn't score, I didn't give assists, so I usually do these. But I guess uh, it's second game. I'm getting to know everyone. Chemistry is important. And hopefully, uh, uh, during the next games, we're going to get this win, me and my teammates. And I'm going to give my best and start to, and hopefully get my first goal and break the ice. All right, Drew, getting emotional out there. What was the most frustrating part of today's game for you? For me personally, just letting in that, that goal that I let in. It's always tough to like make a bad mistake like that and then you know mentally have to go forward and keep your team in the game. But the boys did a great job of picking me back up. And you know, in the second half, we really started to pile on the goals and help me you know, just keep my focus and stay mentally in it. Sal's the top spot, guys. Is anybody after Sal for that top spot? Or are we all just like, yeah, Kendall's after no, it. Not yep, letting it come in, bro. Not, <laughs> not letting it go. The ranking system is interesting. I like that we also have a chance to rank because, you know, we're the ones ultimately performing. So we have a say in who the top players are. We don't know each other and we all came from different places. So um, for, to, to be win, to, to get the win as a team, you have to make other people better. Uh, I really enjoy playing with Kendall. He's a really speedy winger. He, he takes a lot of shots. He gets in the box well. and He just creates a lot for our team. He's awesome to play with. It is my first win, too. So. <laughs> I got it. I gotta stand these two more. <laughs> I'm just happy. I, I just do what I do and come out here and have fun and just trying to get that spot and also just having fun as well. I like this, like what they're doing. I like how they have staff and everybody coming out and supporting and you know, it's good to see it. It's good. To, I like this program. I really do. He's my son. <laughs> how many games are you guys gonna plan on coming out to? On oh, no, all of them. All of them. Coming up on Undrafted. I feel like in my life, I feel like some problems, I can't just figure them out by myself. 
sometimes you need different other perspectives or different types of views to view certain things a different way. And that to me is just something that I love about soccer. You're able to run, you're able to have the touch on the ball and you can switch a game and you can go from losing a game a whole half and then the next half you come back and you can turn the game around. I feel like uh, the Indy 11 undrafted program helped me realize that it doesn't matter kind of what your past is, it matters what's going on now. So whatever you gotta do to get to where you wanna get, you gotta do it now. And this opportunity, is it, I know a lot of players are looking for this opportunity and I know a lot of kids want to be in the, in the opportunity that I am right now. So just this to me is already an achievement. It's already a goal. It's already something that I, I'm proud of. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta count the assists too, because people sometimes don't count the assists. Assist the three. Yeah, and, assist. And plus, yeah, yeah, and plus you have to, I like to count also the potential assists, like, I give potential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, he's talking about passing somebody next turn. I was too strong running, but he missed the shot. Uh, so I could have taken the shot, but I passed it, and he missed the shot. So it's potential assist. I like to. <laughs>